Well, uh, good morning, evening, or afternoon to everybody who's joined in. Uh, my name is Brian Benish with CSIAC. Thank you for uh, participating in this webinar so far. I'm just going to give you a quick introduction to CSIAC, uh, give you a quick overview of the platform for this webinar, and then hand the rest of the, the time over for the uh, presentation. Um, so just to kick things off quickly, so CSIAC, we are the cybersecurity and Information Systems Information Analysis Center. We're a DoD entity uh, organizationally within USDRE, uh, Office Secretary of Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. And uh, under that, under, we are under DTIC, which is the Defense Technical Information Center. Uh, DTIC's um, major claim to fame is, is likely their RE Gateway, uh, which principally is a library that holds millions and millions of DoD and federally funded reports and other scientific and technical information. And so uh, they have stood us up, one of three IACs, Information Analysis Centers, uh, to help those working in, in particular here, the cybersecurity domain of DoD research and engineering, to help them find information they need to get a head start on any of their technical projects. Uh, we are staffed with technical researchers who understand the, the cybersecurity DoD landscape, and our research analysis services help provide folks who come to us, our customers, with access to information, knowledge, best practices uh, from government, industry, academia, and, and connections to other subject matter experts in the industry. Um, so our goal is to hopefully provide some technical information so that we can if, eventually help eliminate or at least reduce some of the redundant research that's being done throughout the, the DoD uh, research engineering community, help stimulate some innovation and foster collaboration. And so one way we do that is through this webinar these kind of webinar presentations that we host, um, they provide a technical overview of DoD work that's being performed uh, with the intent of uh, informing those about that work, um, helping provide some sort of training to uh, attendees, and then simply promoting awareness of the work itself uh, with the aim, again, of, of hopefully serving to as a catalyst for community collaboration. And so uh, I'd encourage if you want to to get some more information about CSIAC to go on our website, csiac.org. Uh, you can learn more, find uh, more information about who we are, what we do, and what we can offer. Um, so that's just a quick overview of who we are, CSIAC. Uh, the, now, to give you a quick intro to the platform that you are in, the any meeting platform for this webinar, um, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is very top middle of the screen. If you are in the web browser platform, there should be a little dialog box uh, that if you hover over it, uh, says something about questions, that's where you will submit your uh, questions at any time during the presentation. If you have a question, I encourage you to click that, uh, enter it in, and it'll just get filed in queue. And then at the end of the presentation, we will uh, walk through those questions in the order that they are received. Uh, I will distinguish that from the, the chat feature, which should be on the left side of the browser. Uh, that chat feature will just kind of go to us, sort of unofficial. So I really encourage you, if you do want to put a, a particular question, just go ahead and put it in that question form, again, top middle of your screen. Um, other note, if you are having any technical issues with this platform, um, just uh, be aware that we are recording it. So if there's, if, if you are able, if you do drop off for any reason, um, we'll be able to provide the link out afterwards for you to, to watch it later on. Um, if you are dialed in though, and you're not able to get to, to see the slides through this platform, uh, you can go to the CSIAC website uh, find this webinar presentation webpage and download the slides from there to help to, to follow along. All right, I think that is enough of an intro. Um, without further ado, I will hand the time over to Burhan if you want to kick things off. The floor is yours. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Brian. Thanks, everyone. Uh, uh, like Brian said, I don't know where you are, but wherever you are, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. <laughs> Um, um, by way of uh, uh, just a quick uh, uh, introduction, um, my name is Brohan Adam. I am with the Office of Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. Within this office, I am a member of the Science and Technology Protection and Exploitation Resilient Systems Team or Directorate. Uh, within this directorate, uh, I am the uh, lead for resilient systems policy, uh, guidance, and standards. Uh, and, and within this area of my responsibility, among other things, I have the task, I have the dubious task of capturing uh, cyber resilient weapon systems, or CRUISE, what I will just shorten as engineering 
best practices and uh, establishing supporting uh, guides and guidebooks and standards. And, and, and this is a responsibility also includes uh, establishment and the management of the cruise body of knowledge repository and the portal uh, that's the uh, briefing today we're going to discuss so cruise block or as if I can shorten that as uh, cruise uh, by online it's an online repository capability and uh, uh, it's intended to collect and warehouse uh, all the technical information in the space of cyber resilient systems engineering uh, from tech, from the technical community, uh, including science and technology community. Uh, we establish uh, this portal to allow government, um, industry, and academia to share information in this space and to facilitate and uh, foster collaboration and uh, information sharing among those entities. Uh, it is a resource that will support our defense policy strategy uh, to uh, design and uh, build and deploy cyber resilient weapon systems. And uh, we thank you for this opportunity today uh, uh, to, to give you a brief on this. And uh, we will give you insights into the capability and the functionality of the portal as well as its con ops. Um, I am just just kicking off and setting uh, setting the stage uh, for Angela Lungu and uh, Madison Ruddy, who will uh, tag team in providing you this brief. Uh, Angela, Madison, do you, uh, would you please just quick intro introduction for yourselves as well? Angela, can you hear me? Yes. I, oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I'm the uh, Kruzbach uh, lead for this project, and uh, it come at this uh, over the last um, year where we have uh, worked with developing this project into a uh, entity, a portal for the community, and we're very pleased to have uh, recently deployed this uh, in May, uh, May 6th. And uh, we'll be providing this overview for you. Uh, Madison, uh, if you wanted to provide just a um, overview of where you came into this project. Sure. Um, so I'm Madison Rudy. I've been providing part-time support uh, starting in 2017, and I was brought on full-time in 2019 um, as the lead analyst for the program. Um, and I've been helping Angela and Burhan and our development team just to get this produced and uh, communicating with the community in a way to uh, just find out what, how we can best help uh, to grow the cyber resilience uh, knowledge base. Okay, Thank, thanks uh, Angela, thanks uh, Madison. Next chart. Uh, this, uh, this is the outline of, of the brief. Uh, I will touch on, on the mission uh, statement of the Cruise Park. Um, then after that, Madison will take it from there and uh, discuss the capability and the con ops of the portal. Uh, Angela will follow Madison and give you insights into the structure and functionalities of the portal. Uh, also, Angela will touch on metrics for the utility and traffic of the portal. Uh, we will also share with you our uh, other outreach plans as we move forward uh, to get the word out. Uh, and uh, you know that's pretty much will uh, will you know be the outline of the brief. Uh, next chart, please. Um, I, I, I trust that you can read the words on this chart, uh, which is the, the efficient statement of the cruise park. Uh, in a nutshell, it, it's really a digital repository of all the work we be, and we're going to be collecting uh, in, as part of the crew's body of knowledge, or you know, a cyber resilient weapon systems engineering body of knowledge that we will be gathering and engaging with the industry as well as academia and industry and uh, and all the other partners that we have in this space. Uh, 
and include the science and technology community and uh, developing that. Uh, we are collecting and then co curating that information and storing that and sharing among engineering and science and, co and te uh, technology communities. Uh, that also includes industry, as I said earlier, and academia. The goal of the Cruise Park is really, again, just to reemphasize it, is to act as the repository for learning. Uh, in in the, in the space of site secure cyber resilient engineering, and assist those designing and developing weapon systems to integrate cyber resiliency into their design decision making process and their design trade space, and as well as supporting the operations and the sustainment of weapon systems um, and with software intensive system as well. Again, uh, it's a resource, uh, you know, for the technical community. Uh, and uh, at this point, uh, if, you know, I will turn it over uh, to um, uh, Madison to uh, walk you through some of the con-ops and uh, aspect of this and uh, functionalities as well. So over to you, Madison. All right. Thank you, Berhan. Um, so just to quick go over the overview of the CruiseBot capabilities, our goal was to create a comprehensive, continuously updating repository of curated engineering information to produce cyber secure, cyber survivable, and cyber resilient weapon systems. Um, this was the goal behind it because we are familiar with many bodies of knowledge being very stagnant. And we wanted this to be something that was living, so it would be uh, more usable to a community because it would always be up to date. Um, it also includes a powerful viewing environment that enables users to efficiently and easily access, search, annotate, save, and share the engineering information they need for both individual and collaborative purposes. Uh, and Angela will get into these features a bit later. We have some screenshots for you guys today. And finally, links to cruise relevant workforce training, competencies, and credentialing information within the repository. And all the information we include is based off of community feedback. So whatever the community feels is most necessary to develop a resilient knowledge base for, um, for learning about resilience or uh, developing a cyber resilient system, that is the information that we, we seek to include within the repository. So for the concept of concept of operations, our owner, um, our OUSD R&E, uh, STIPI, Resilient Systems, and SAIC, and our intended audience for the cruise block are those in the resilient systems and adjacent communities. Uh, so this includes engineers, program managers, S&T managers, academics, and policy writers. And even if you don't even if you aren't directly connected to the resilient systems community, odds are you probably will be looking to have a resilient system. Um, so you will likely have information that you find relevant in the cruise block. Moving on to adding and removing content, who's in charge of uh, adding information to the cruise block? We have content management stakeholders um, on our review board. It's comp composed of representative members from government, industry, and academia with curation team facilitation. So this team includes our OUSD r and &E representative, uh, Mr. Burhan Adam, uh, DOD Cybersecurity Industry Techno Technical Advisory Group, or CITAG rep, uh, National Defense Industrial Association, uh, System Security Engineering Committee rep, and a representative from System, Systems Engineering Research Center. And so once a month, we gather a list of candidate resources um, and package them to send to the curation team, or packaged by the curation team to send to the review board just to gather comments and see which resources are most relevant to be included within the cruise box. Um, and then the review board adjudicates whether a resource meets all the acceptance criteria uh, for then publication on the review on cruise block. And by publication, I mean these resources have been prior 
published, they're just being uploaded to the repository. So our list of basic criteria for inclusion in the cruise box are that all material included in the repository are unclassified and approved for unrestricted public release. Restricted public release material, so resources with associated paywalls, um, will have URL or link shown, but won't be contained in the CruiseBlock repository. So people coming and interested in looking at these resources will be directed elsewhere. The PDF itself will not be included in CruiseBlock. Foreign or sovereign-owned material will not be accepted for inclusion. A uh, document and draft can be nominated, but cannot be accepted for inclusion until it has reached official publication. Um, and this is just to ensure that there is a sense of authority with these documents, where if something's in draft and changing, we don't want it to be uploaded. Um, and finally, a list of topics of interest will be consulted for resource relevancy. Um, and if you have the slides downloaded, these are we have the full list in the backup slides that you can go check out. Oh, I can't see, okay. For maintaining quality, users are able to nominate new resources for consideration by the review board. Um, so if a user has a active account, if they're registered, you're able to nominate a resource for consideration. Um, if you're a guest user, you are not currently able to, and this is, again, just to ensure we don't get random nominations, there is a um, there is a baseline set of criteria just to make sure we are getting valid resources from active members of the community. And there is ongoing validation of resources included in the repository to ensure they are the most current version. When a resource is retired or rescinded, related documentation will automatically be put up for review. Um, and we have algorithms and metrics that are leveraged to determine when resources need to be reviewed. This is based on how frequently a resource is accessed or if a resource is consistently rated as poor by users. And this is something Angela will touch on a bit more. Um, and poor performance in the above qualifications will place the resource on the candidate for removal list for the curation team to review. And with that, I will pass it over to Angela to go over the cruise box features. Thank you. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cover basically all the functionality that we have at this point. And we recently released version 1.1.1 uh, of CruiseBock, which uh, introduced a couple of new features and improvements, which I'm going to go ahead and include here in this discussion. So the CruiseBock portal is accessed uh, from www.cruise-bock.org. And it allows the users to remain as Madison covered or alluded to. Uh, you can remain as a guest, or you can register with their email address for a free account, which will grant them full functionality on the portal itself. And the currently active features, which I'll show you in more detail in the next few slides, include searching capabilities, general usability features for the user interface environment, push capabilities such as notification and other customizations based on the individual user preferences. So for example, dark mode, which was requested during our usability testing and improve search result views using an optional list view. And then some of the planned features our developers are currently working on include enhanced AI assisted relationship mapping or graph databases and then other enhancements to the graph relationships view and the rest of the interface in order to make it uh, a little bit more efficient and relevant to how the users are actually navigating the portal. And then what you see here is the actual uh, landing screen and I'm going to go ahead and uh, start here. This is the screen that a registered user is going to see when they first log on or go to the cruisebox.org. And as I mentioned, registration is not necessary, but the additional features such as save searches and the ability to nominate a resource won't be active for those guest users. 
And there are two ways that you can search. One is the guided search, which is shown here, and that's designed around a baseline framework of knowledge areas, which represent a taxonomy of relevant cyber resilient and systems engineering concepts, which are basically taken from the ISO IEEE 1529, which you see in the first two blocks, and those would be uh, the area to protect in the technical process. Um, the select, if you select the desired area in the process results in your initial search, and then this is designed for the user who may not need to have a specific of a search in mind, and then you can refine it even further, which I'm going to show you shortly. And then if you note the quick link to authoritative glo uh, glossaries right underneath that, it's uh, probably not as clear as it could be, uh, right underneath those three columns, uh, that's basically your definitions and terminology. And then for those users who may have a very specific search in mind, right at the top there, you can see there's a uh, keyword or phrase search bar, and that's for the users to quickly get at what they want uh, using that direct search. And then what you see here when they first log on, and this can also be turned right off, uh, turned off so you don't see this repeatedly, but this is a guided tutorial that users will see um, when they first log on the first time, and it's a, you can also, um, it's a show me how link that'll also be available. Um, it can be turned off, but it's always accessible if anybody needs to use that later. And then the other areas, uh, the user areas for other features, such as uh, on the uh, resources, settings, contact, and site information will be all located on the left navigation menu on the home page. And you can always, um, they can always be found using the home icon, uh, which will be on the left, uh, on the upper right bar. And I'm going to show you that again. Get to the next slide. And you can see it in the upper right corner. Um, it's a little blurred, but in the far upper right corner, there's a, a little home icon, and that'll always get you back to that main landing page. So what you're looking at here is the search results view. And once you click either entering that search bar with a, with a keyword or the phrase or that guided search, you're going to get your search results, and that'll be this page here. And this is really the heart of Cruisebox. And that deserves a little bit more time. And this is basically showing you the resource cards view in this center page. And there's also a list view option, which I mentioned earlier. And that can be selected at any time from the upper right corner near the settings icon. But what you see here in the resource cards view are those, those results. And this is basically the most essential snapshot views of those individual search results. And each of those cards view will give you the title, the domain, a preview image, the version information, user rating, the usability rating, and other essential function icons, which is uh, for each of those results. And these functions allow the user to basically quickly mark a resource and save it to the user's personal list of favorites. You can add a notification for when new versions of the resource are added to the repository. You can download that resource to the user's computer or mobile phone. You can view the resource, view the relationship, relationships graph, or basically share a link to the specific resource uh, with others uh, through email, for example. Now, the usability uh, rating, which is um, in the upper right corner, um, you'll see um, it's, you can see it here. It's grayed out. It's, uh, or it's, it's blurry. Uh, it's colored either, you can see it's gold, and it comes in, in gold, silver, or bronze. And that's basically designed as a decision support feature to help users better assess the value of each of those resources. And the initial algorithm that we have right now is based on several factors, such as the domain type, the age of the document, and whether it's gone through a formal peer review. And then the user rating, which you'll see uh, below there, and those are indicated by stars. Those are star ratings. And they're very similar to um, Amazon, for example, in terms of the value and the usefulness um, that the user has rated the resource um, in terms of uh, helping the user in accomplishing their particular task. And then on the left side, again, uh, of, the, of the screen, um, that particular window, you'll see the various filters for further refining the search. 
and you can add additional keywords by directly entering it in the uh, text box above on the left side. And you can also make use of the various filters listed below that text box, such as resource type, topics, user ratings, office of primary responsibility, or domain. And then you can easily remove a particular filter by clicking the X next to them at the top. If you look at the top of those resource cards, you'll see blue, a blue oval. There's only one in this particular case. And um, you can, as they are, as your filters are added to your search, you can also delete those just by clicking on the uh, X's in each of those ovals. And you can remove those from your filter, your searches. And then there's also a save search icon, which I'll cover next. And then you can save your search as you've refined it and filled, fiddled with it uh, to where you actually like it. And you can actually save your finalized search uh, for use uh, later on. So now we'll go to um, the next here. And then what you're seeing here when you save your search is, um, let me actually show you back here. This is actually the list view. And I wanted to show you what we were looking at previously were the cards view. And you can actually look at the results of your search in a list view. And this is basically all your results just shown in an easier um, uh, view in a list format. And this allows you to look at a larger number of results uh, on a single page uh, in a list format. And you have the same information just in uh, rows rather than in cards. Then uh, what you're seeing here is the saved search. And you can save as many of these searches as you wish, and you give a name uh, and then a description. And what's um, nice about these saved searches is that you can um, have these saved searches, uh, you can elect to have uh, them uh, send uh, a notification, a push notification to the user on a frequency determined by the user, either weekly, uh, monthly, uh, whatever you, you wish, and there's several options, uh, to be notified any time that there is an addition, um, a, a resource that might meet any of those criteria in your saved search that's added to that uh, the repository, um, uh, and you would be notified of when that is, um, that uh, either a, a new version in that uh, saved search or a new item in that saved search. Uh, and then you would be notified uh, based on that uh, frequency that you've elected. So again, this is only uh, for those registered users. This is part of the full functionality. So what you see in this next uh, here, uh, this uh, view, is uh, when we get into the details. So what we showed you were just the quick view. When you double click on one of these resource cards, you get into what we call the details window of each of these resources. And in the details window, you get into the more comprehensive um, information for each of the resources. So in this in the details view, you can see there are three. There's actually four tabs. Um, uh, this view here uh, did not have the most current. Uh, we just recently added a fourth uh, tab in here. So this first tab here has the um, the viewer, and then we have in the the next tab is the uh, details. And then the third tab is called Relationships. And then the fourth that's not shown here that was just recently added is called References, also known as the parent-child. So the, the first tab uh, that is shown here is Viewer. And the Viewer um, gives you the ability to annotate the document. So if you pull up this uh, document, you have the ability to make comments and the comments, uh, it's basically a PDF viewer. And you, um, you are now looking at your document. And you're, you can make any kind of uh, annotations on it, such as underlining, adding text, circling, scratching out, lining through. Uh, you can print the document. You can highlight it. 
but I do want to highlight that when you make any kind of annotation, you are making that only, uh, the user is making these annotations only to the local copy. So it's only saved to the user's copy and saved only to the uh, the user's desktop, for example, or print, uh, and it is then printed to the user's uh, printer. Uh, it is not uh, affecting the original document that is saved to the Cruzbach uh, repository. That uh, it, the integrity of that document remains intact, um, and and this is this allows the user to download, uh, gives the user the option to download uh, with those annotations. They can save that uh, annotated uh, copy and then forward that annotated copy and share it um, at will with those annotations but it is only to the local copy. And then, um, again, um, those all, you can also, at the very bottom of this uh, screenshot, you can see that there is additional search terms that you can do from within that uh, details, uh, in that viewer, PDF viewer, you can do additional searches. Um, I'm gonna go to the next tab within the details view. And that uh, the second tab is called details. And in the details, you have uh, such information as um, uh, the abstract that might be uh, as applicable. Uh, you would have the URL uh, for going directly to the source URL for that resource. Uh, you would then have copyright information, the topic information, uh, and any other uh, relevant information as applicable, such as uh, the Office of Primary Responsibility and anything else that might be um, uh, meta tagged, uh, inserted in, in there. Um, resource version is also included. The next uh, relationships tab is uh, another very interesting feature uh, that we're uh, working on our developers are uh, enhancing um, currently. Um, make sure we can get this loaded. This uh, graph here, it's a filterable graph, and it's similar to the social graphs used, uh, for example, by Facebook. And these um, filterable graphs or social graphs uh, basically use the resources that are contained within the repository, uh, the Cruzbach repository, and they're basically uh, connecting and showing the relationships, uh, the meta tag relationships of all the resources within the repository using the, the um, the tags that are shown within the legend, and you can deselect, um, for example, in some of these, uh, there may be a lot of uh, relationships that make the graph uh, very, very, um, uh, a very tangled web, as you can see on there. But it allows you to look at and examine trends and relationships that may not be um, as obvious uh, without looking at these um, uh, graphs. Uh, and when you see those those relationships uh, in this type of a graph, it allows you to make those connections and view those relationships um, easily. For example, if you want to uh, make a change, if you're uh, contemplating a change in a, one policy, you can uh, very easily look to see the impact and the um, the, the uh, connecting um, the repercussions. Uh, much e much more easily um, using uh, a technique such as this. Uh, you can deselect using the, the legend at the left, and again, you can click on each of those nodes and bring up and open up the relevant um, documents and references by clicking on each of those end nodes and open those up in a um, limited view. It's, a, it's a, a smaller window. It won't have quite as many details, but it'll open up a detailed view uh, window for each of those related um, references in each of those end nodes. But it will give you um, the relationships and the connecting nodes uh, for each of those meta meta tags uh, listed in the legend. And you can look at, for example, um, uh, 
uh, OPRs, you can look at topics, you can look at by authors, uh, all the relationships that would be linking any of those uh, references or resources uh, for each of your um, your your key or star um, reference. For example, you can it's hard to see here. There's a green star at the center. That is your your focus uh, up here at the very top is your focus re uh, resource, and that is the main focus, the green star, and that is the center point from which all these uh, other nodes are emanating, and that would be the focus of this uh, relationships chart. And that's where you get all the rest of these nodes emanating from and the relationships. So the next chart or the next table that you would see uh, out of that um, that I see if I could see that here. I think we may not have it on here yet. Um, this one here is the um, is the uh, uh, references tab. It's also called a parent child um, table. And each of those tabs on the left would actually show you um, the resources again from that um, uh, uh, origin resource that you're looking at. Uh, it would show you the um, resources that are either referenced by or referenced to uh, that origin resource. So again, um, it's a parent-child, uh, also known as a parent-child um, reference table, and it'll give you that information as well. And we're refining that as, uh, to make it a little bit more detailed and a little bit more useful based on um, user feedback on how uh, the community would be using that. And we're getting that from the most recent um, usability test to see how people would be um, using that and trying to make that more, um, more adaptable to, uh, to their tasks. Next slide here. Uh, Another feature that we most recently included and added uh, to CruiseBock is, and this was again based on ongoing feedback and requirements, is a role-based um, role-based areas. And the one that you're seeing here in this uh, in this view is one for our review board. And Madison mentioned that uh, when we talked about uh, the maintaining um, maintaining our uh, repository. And this allows members of the review board, uh, based on uh, when they log on to CruiseBock, they see a, an area, um, if you look on the left side, it's a review board um, tag uh, that they're able to click on and they see an area based on their role as a member of the review board group. And they are able to see, at this point, they're able to see the nominated artifacts and the nominated uh, resources uh, for them to review. And they can see that from within CruiseBock. And it's in a holding area. It's, it's, a, um, it's in a restricted, um, sanitized area that is not part of the overall repository. Uh, it is still under review, not approved. Uh, so they're able to look at it. Our goal ultimately is to have the entire workflow process um, conducted within CruiseBoc, uh, whereby they're able, right now, the, um, as, art, as resources are nominated, they go into a holding area. The curation team is then able to um, review them, make sure they meet the minimum requirements. Um, then they are then... Um, parsed and put into a list view uh, and, and circulated and, and put forth for the review board to review. And then the review board is able to access them from a separate area. And then they go into an adjudication process. And once they're uh, approved to go into the repository uh, as part of that workflow process, then they're moved over into the approved portion of the repository. Um, that full process, workflow process has not yet been approved. Um, completed, but that is the ultimate goal where everything is conducted in the CruiseBoc portal. So those are the uh, areas in the direction that the CruiseBoc is going. Um, the other portion of the role-based process um, is the uh, usability uh, testing. Uh, and the participants, uh, we did this in one of our most recent usability tests, 
um, had that uh, for the uh, feedback uh, surveys. And those members of the uh, usability testing group, for example, were able to see the, um, the feedback links in their, um, when they logged on. And here you can see that in this screenshot. In this um, next area here, you can see uh, another area that we focused a lot on during the development, which was to make sure that uh, CruiseBock was fully accessible um, for all members of the community uh, to make sure that it was fully compliant with Section 508. And that was to make sure that um, the CruiseBock portal could be viewed using any kind of um, assistive technology, adaptive technologies to include screen readers, for example, or voice recognition devices. And so we made, wanted to make sure that it um, met or exceeded any kind of devices and all, all recommended practices. And we, made, we went through and, and actually used um, Andy, the, uh, uh, Andy and, and the, um, they have a color contrast analyzer, for example, and then uh, they had JAWS, which is a, a speech recognition device. Um, we went through all the best practices um, that we could find uh, with GSA. Uh, we went through uh, Department of Homeland Security and went through all of that um, uh, guidance and uh, made sure that we could adjust that during the development process and then again right before deployment to make sure that any um, adjustments we did were fully compliant and uh, very proud uh, to say that uh, when it, it uh, exceeded in all areas. So um, we continue to uh, go through the checklist and make sure that any um, revisions or enhancements we do are fully compliant. Um, Another area that we focus heavily on, especially uh, post-deployment, is to make sure that no matter how uh, much effort we focus on the development, uh, it's very important that we make sure that to listen to the feedback and, uh, and track the metrics of, of uh, what we're deploying. And make sure that what we're what we're uh, we're modifying and uh, addressing is in concert with what the community is is requesting and so the outreach plan that we've developed is uh, is indexed with the metrics that we we check weekly and to determine the impacts of the outreach efforts and making sure that we're reaching the targeted user groups to make sure that we're reaching the community um, and making sure that uh, everything that we're designing and developing is compatible with how the community is using it and how their uh, preferred means of, of using it is, is in concert with what we're designing it for. Uh, so you can see here just some idea of uh, tracking some of the um, outreach efforts, uh, some of the outreach efforts such as these uh, presentations to make sure that we're getting the word out uh, and how we're um, addressing it, how the uh, user, the community is using it is um, in concert with what we're, how we're developing it. If they're using it on mobile phones, for example, we want to make sure that uh, it can be read and, and works and reads well on a mobile phone. So we're, we're trying to make sure that we're doing that as well. And again, we mentioned that usability, we're doing regular usability testing to make sure that that's, uh, that's true. So this is uh, just an example of some of the uh, ways we're trying to use social media. We're trying to leverage uh, partner sites to make sure uh, that we have um, links out there so that people can um, reach us and get out, um, know how to, to get to CruiseBoc uh, and to use it. And I think we have, I think that would be just about all the information. And uh, without further ado, I will turn this back over to Burhan and take any questions okay. that we have. Um, see, I'm assuming, uh, it was what a yawn. Um, <laughs> uh, see. Um, Unfortunately, I can't see this slide. So, you this uh, which slide are you on? 
And 27. All right. So we, we'll, we'll go ahead and do a couple of questions. Uh, we have one that's in the queue, but again, just want to remind everybody, if you do have any questions, um, that question box, dialog box, should be the top middle of the screen. Um, enter them any time, and, and we'll just kind of work through them. There's only one question in the queue right now, so I'm go ahead and bring that up. All right, and this is somewhat uh, generic here, so I'll just reread this, and, and you all can feel free to respond as you wish. The question is, can you share any information about the nature or distribution of the user community? Rohan, did you want to answer that, or um, I could, or we? I know the information was. Go ahead. I the uh, I know Miss Reed and uh, uh, Mr. Adam wanted to make sure that um, it was available to not only the uh, government community as we had, as uh, uh, Rohan had addressed right up front but as well as with our partners in industry and academia. So it does involve, as you, as you saw with uh, NDIA, with, uh, with the SciTag, uh, for example, the um, development of the acceptance criteria was done in concert with the SciTag leads. Uh, the, as you saw the composition of the uh, review board for the uh, maintenance of the repository is uh, involves uh, members of academia and industry. So they're very serious about making sure that there is um, uh, very much um, coordination and uh, cooperation with uh, you know, in, in everyone involved. And uh, they take that very seriously. And uh, there's a lot of, of uh, close, close uh, cooperation with all of those members. Okay, no, that's great. Uh, any, any more to add to that? Anyone else? Uh, no, I think um, we we hold uh, regular engagement with industry and academia. We have including our FRDC labs as well. Uh, we host uh, work, uh, cruise workshops. Uh, in fact, there's one coming up in, uh, in October tentatively, if all goes well with, uh, with, with the Delta variants. I don't know, we plan to have that in, in person if possible, but we are subject to the policy of COVID-19 anyways. But anyways, we, we, we have these workshops where we bring in uh, the expertise that we know of in this space, uh, and all you know, from all the partners we have, and um, so it's a it's, what you see is a culmination of those efforts to make sure those things are coordinated across, and we have a cl close engagement, as as Angela said. Uh, over. Okay. Great. And actually, you know what? We got a little bit of clarification from the, the question here. Uh, Paul is wanting more specifically to ask. Who is actually using it? Let me put more bluntly. Like, are you able to by share? Name or, are you asking by name? Well, I mean, I, have, I, I can't I, say. I, I'm not going to give names here, but uh, right. I would say we talk about industry and um, India uh, organizations. Systems engineering communities from across the big industry partners. Mm -hmm. We are talking about academia, universities that are part of the Systems Engineering Resource Center of the DOD. Uh, we're talking about all the FFRDC supporting us. Uh, so those those are the cross section of the partners and the participants, and that we have uh, we engage in in collecting information from. Over. Any, uh, if you had to kind of take a, a swag at the distribution between those in government, industry, and academia using it, uh, how much you kind of assess that that distribution? Oh, per, are you talking percentage wise? Sure. Yeah. I, yep. I think, is that what you're? Oh, oh okay, okay. The clarification. Most I could actually uh, give you a guess. It's it's a it's a nice ratio. We had a. Um, when we don't track names, but I can tell you from the registration um, domains, just uh, because we're tracking of, of 
from uh, usability, uh, we want to make sure that we're getting that feedback. And I know participation-wise, uh, it's a rather even distribution, uh, which is almost exactly what we'd like to see. And from the last usability test, we wanted to get the feedback. Um, it was a, a slightly higher on the um, government, but not by much. Uh, and then the next was on the um, academia. But um, in our participation from the usability, I mean, testing that we did, uh, dr uh, we had two major usability tests uh, right up to the deployment and the participation rate uh, we, when we we went after um, we broke it out evenly uh, 30 30 30 um, you know 33 uh, percent but broke it out evenly and the actual uh, participation rate uh, coming back was uh, spot on uh, from all three areas. You know, we've got participants uh, representing all three of those gr groups, academia, industry, and government. And, um, you know, with the, with the feedback, so it was uh, open-ended feedback, uh, open-ended questions, as well as standardized questionnaires, and uh, they were all very robust uh, responses, and um, which was pleasantly, you know, we were very pleased with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a lot of involvement from the stakeholders um, and uh, a lot of um, interest um, follow-on, you know, where people wanted to be included in the follow-on feed uh, usability testing. So mm -hmm. um, we're very pleased with that. Okay. No, I think that very much answers the question, at least as best I understand it. So thank you. Um, no problem. All right. So it looks like we do. That was the only question that it's come in. I'm not going to hold everyone up much longer, but I'll just sort of try to lather on for a moment or two if there's any, anyone who wants to submit a question in these closing moments. Um, otherwise, of course, we can just we can close out and um, kind of go from there. All right. Well, I won't prolong yeah, it. If you have, um, if, if something pops up, uh, by any means, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You have slide 27, you have the contact uh, information of uh, me and, um, and Angela as well as Madison. Uh, please don't hesitate. You have emails um, and as well as uh, yeah, emails there as well. Uh, so reach out to us. Uh, Love to hear, you know, external um, partners as well. I and um, encourage you to check it out and uh, give us the feedback as well. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity, Brian, to uh, to come, you know, to facilitate this for us today. And uh, thank you so much for your help. And uh, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you very much. Perfect. Yes, that's a great closing. Thanks much, Brian and, and Angela and Madison, for the presentation and. Um, Again, this will be recorded. We'll send out a link to follow up. So if there are any other questions, uh, feel free to get in touch with any one of us and we'll be glad to help you out. So everyone have a great rest of your day. Thank you Thank very you much. much. Thank you.